Ooh, what a, what a nice setup shot we've got here. Somebody already set up all these cameras for me, so I can just get right to work. We're testing the most expensive ham radio HTs you can buy, and one of them you can't anymore. Let's get started. All right, if you've seen any of my videos in the park before, you know I like to take either antennas out in the field, try a bunch of them against a standard radio, or flip it around, use the same antenna, and compare multiple radios. Today is something we've all wanted to know for a very long time. Which of the most expensive ham radios that are available on the market today perform the best? And we're gonna find out. The first one we're gonna test is a radio that's not on the market anymore. We're gonna get this one right out of the way because I know you guys are curious about it. This is the Kenwood D74. No longer available, very good radio, but $800 on eBay. And I apologize for the wind. Hopefully my dead cat is doing the job. I'm gonna be transmitting from this radio to my home radio station, and we're gonna look at the signal to noise ratio that was received on two meters and 70 centimeters. That will tell us about how effective this radio is in comparison to its competitors in transmitting a signal. We'll also test the receive audio in by using a weather station. No simplex repeater today. Uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different by going with a weather station for received audio. Let's see how we do. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, testing the Kenwood D74, uh, 2 meters, high power, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Alright, that was 2 meters, let's flip it over and do 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, transmitting on the Kenwood D74, high power, high power, 70 centimeters. Transmit test will again tell us how strong the radio transmit two meters versus 70 centimeters. The reason why I go with the signal stuff signal stick is because it's pretty balanced in both working on two meters and 70 centimeters. Generally, antennas like these will favor one or the other, like that Nagoya everybody likes, the 771, I believe, generally favors 70 centimeters versus two meters like we have here. All right, let's do a receive test. Low tide, 1.8 feet at 1240 p.m. Pacific daylight time. That was full volume. Let's go with probably the next, the cheapest in the lineup of the expensive radios. We'll go with the Yesu FT5DR, still on the market. Probably my favorite outdoor HT, meaning take it out for a soda summit, or something like that. Definitely my favorite radio. All right, Yesu FT5DR on two meters. This is the Yesu FT5DR testing high power, high power, Kilo India 6, in November Alpha Zulu. Time is 4.57 p.m. Lots of time there talking, adds a couple more data points so that we make sure we get uh, a good signal report on the back end. Let's change this over to UHF. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu transmitting with the Yesu FT5DR. High power, high power, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Time is 4.50 p.m. All right, let's check out the weather stations and see what we can do there as far as same signal, same weather station, same antenna. Let's do that speaker test. So you're hearing the audio coming out of this full blast. In Los Angeles Civic Center, it was sunny with a temperature of 68. It was mostly sunny with a temperature of 67 at Los Angeles Airport, 70 at Burbank, 69 at John Wayne Airport, and 68 at Fullerton. At Long Beach, it was partly sunny with a temperature Not bad. of 67. A lot of people have said that this radio, the FT5, has a pretty quiet speaker. And I, I'll say that, yeah, it's, it's more on the quiet side, and then couple the fact that it is submersible. And it's, it's going to have some effect as far as the output, as far as the audio quality, but it sounds pretty good. I, I think it's always sounded pretty good. I've, I've liked the FT2, the FT3, and the FT5. All right, probably the newest radio in the bunch here is the ICOM ID52. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, testing the ICOM ID52. This is at high power, high power, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. 
All right, flipping it around, we're gonna go to 70 centimeters now. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu transmitting on 70 centimeters with the ICOM ID 52. High power, high power. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. On Tuesday, November now, 1st, these were the here's the speaker the output. Coast, across the Southern California waters. Free land. At East Santa Barbara Channel 3, winds were west at 14 knots. Wave height 4 feet at 11 seconds. Sea temperature 63. Air temperature 60. At Santa Monica Bay Buoy, wave height 3 feet at 15 seconds. Sea temperature 67. At San Pedro Channel Buoy, Not bad. All right, so now I've said every time I come out here and do one of these videos, I have to bring a standard, what we're calling a benchmark that we compare the radios against for testing, so that every time I have a benchmark for a radio, in this case it is the VX6R, a middle of the road radio. I take the readings that I've received on this radio every time I've come out here to test radios, and I compare that against itself basically, and that'll give us an offset. So if another day it tested much better, like maybe one dB better, uh, then we know something else is going on atmospherically and, and we can assume that we're probably going to test a little low on any of these radios. So we can kind of find a fudge factor, not to say I'm going to fudge the numbers or anything like that, but at least it gives us an idea if this is testing low or higher than we have actual experience with in the past. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu testing the Yesu VX6. This is our benchmark test to compare against itself to see if there is some kind of change or something we noticed in the last time tested. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, 2 meter, high power at... All right, pretty simple. Let's do VH, or UHF. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu with the Yesu VX6R. This is our baseline test, baseline test. High power, high power, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. 456. All right, so that should be our testing. We can, of course, check the weather station as well. Then mostly cloudy with a chance of showers overnight. Lows in the upper 30s. Snow level 7,500 feet overnight. Areas of wind swing. Now we could just end it there, but expensive radios should have more features than that, right? What makes them so much more compelling? Obviously, they do more things like D-Star, band scope, both of them are GPS enabled, you get the idea. But they actually do more than that. In the case of both these radios, they have either gain that can be applied at the mic level for mic input gain, or they have some kind of control on equalizer on transmit. This does change the output volume of the radio, so it's, it's actually pretty interesting to hear it on the receive side. I'm gonna do that now to show you the difference. So if you can see here on the ICOM, so it says mic game internal and external. So if we take it at its stock setting, here's the internal. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, stock mic gain, stock mic gain. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. All right, let's throw a little gain behind that. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, this is the mic gain cranked all the way up. This is four, past test was two. Notice anything different on the audio? How does my transmit sound? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Pretty interesting. Now, I've had a couple of people say that the audio, the transmit audio on the ID52 is superior than that of many other handhelds, that the, the gain is actually a, a big player in the quality of the audio you get. Uh, so let's see what the Yesu can do. All right, this is the Yesu FT5DR. This is testing against its midpoint in mic gain. This is five. Mic gain is set to five. It maxes out at nine, so we're gonna crank it all the way to nine. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, transmitting at max mic gain. This is nine on the mic gain. Do you notice anything different? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Just a reminder, why do I use a signal stuff signal stick? Well, it's a balanced antenna, meaning it works both two meters and 70 centimeters well. I like the fact that it's flexi. I also like the fact that when you buy a signal stuff signal stick, it goes to support hamstudy.org, which I'm a big fan of in getting more people engaged in the hobby because it's ran and owned by the same people. Anyway, I'm also an affiliate for signal stuff, so every time you buy a signal stuff signal stick, I get a little bit of the action as well. So thanks for doing that. All right, so that is our test. We've tested all the radios with a little playing around with the mic gain as well. Let's look at the numbers and hear my thoughts.
Now, I won't say I'm surprised by the results. All the best radios are relatively close to each other. When you're looking at two meters, uh, these perform a little bit better, and that could be because of the signal stuff signal stick. Uh, then you look at 70 centimeters, same order for 70 centimeters. What's really interesting, though, is when you consider the audio quality between these radios. Personally, I found that the received audio of the ICOM was punchier. And definitely when you included that mic gain, it was just a louder radio. So while it is, I guess, quieter somewhat on transmit, the signal to noise ratio, I think it's gonna be a bit punchier. To be honest though, it's this is totally subjective in my opinion in looking at this. So it's not that big a deal if you disagree. I think the Kenwood and the Yesu, they both did absolutely great. What was really surprising though is when you look at all the radios I've tested. Now just two meters alone, considering all the radios we've done so far, the FT5DR, the D74, and the ID52 are at the top of two meters, followed by the VX6R, and then we get into the Baofengs and the $100 radios. That surprised me actually, and it, it shouldn't, well, because I see all the data, but when I sorted it by highest SNR for the single most highest SNR at any one time, uh, getting all those Japanese radios, those, you know, 400 plus dollar radios at the top, it's the way it should be, but at the same time, I'm glad to see it actually worked out that way. UHF was slightly a different story with some of the Baofengs bubbling up to the top, but you can see the difference between those SNR values. It's, it's really not that big. It's, it's a moot point in general from my point of view. And I'll mention that VX6R showing the 2.2, I think that was totally anomaly. It's tested better than that before in the past, as you can see when I tested it on September 2nd. And it's right there in the pack as well with the ID52. So uh, I'm not worried about it. Still fantastic radios across the board with these very <laughs> expensive radios. But you know what? The VX6R, really good radio for the value. I can tell you regardless of the outcomes of this test, I view these radios in very specific purposes. I think it's a bit insane that I own all three. I appreciate that these are all very expensive radios, but to my mind, they serve very different roles. And I will be talking about that very soon in an upcoming video about what my picks are for 2022 and the best handhelds that you can own from very inexpensive to all the way top of the end top of the high-end amateur radio. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. I'm linking you to another video, so if you like what you're watching right now, you're probably going to like what I'm going to show you next. All right, I'm Josh KI6NAZ. I'll talk to you later. 73. How I get these all packed up is I take the small ones and I wrap them like a burrito. So I'll burrito wrap, put the other HT on top, burrito wrap, fold the ends in, give it another burrito wrap. And that goes right back in.